Hey Hodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we're gonna get critical, and we're gonna get sassy. We're doing another critical sass. We are fast approaching the holiday season. Releases are coming out, left and right. <sighs> Are we ready? I'm not sure. If you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. I run my channel on a couple of ethos and today's video really falls into two of them. Loving my makeup collection as it is and being grateful that I have it. And then the second one is being critical of new makeup releases. What I do during Critical Sass, it's just like, you know, looking at new makeup releases like many other beauty YouTubers do. Unpacking the marketing, the packaging, and really trying to see through all of the BS to decide whether or not these products are worth our time. If that kind of content sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. Every level gets the same two videos every month that every other level does. It's like give if you can, if you would like. Thank you to all of my lovely, beautiful patrons who are already a beautiful supportive patrons and beautifully support me. I appreciate you. And if you could like this video, that really helps me and I would appreciate it. Let's ignore my hair today. Let's not perceive it. I will be sourcing images and scrolling through Trend Mood 1 and Makeup Release Radar to gather some information. I think I have a lot more indie and I also think we're gonna sway more positive this way because I did save some things I would like to discuss with you. And I will be honest, there are some things I don't have much information on because one thing I like about Makeup Release Radar and one thing I dislike about Makeup Release Radar is that they will tell us whether or not we have anything other than a blurry image. We will be seeing a few of those. But the first palette I would like to talk about is from the brand Notoriously Morbid. It's their Rusted Essence Palette, nine shades, $24.99. This palette is stunning. And if I were to have formulated my own fall palette, which I actually did do, and I was about to say if I were to make my own fall palette, it would look just like this. But considering I made two fall palettes that don't look anything like this, it's a little bit of a lie. I do apologize for lying, but I can own up to my faults. Okay, this is stunning. It looks like there's a multi-chrome or duo. There's some duochrome situations, at least, if not multi-chrome situations happening in this palette. That purple, I'm into purples right now. Can you tell? I love everything about this. It looks super pigmented. It looks like it would work for deep skin tones as well as lighter skin tones. Incredible, incredible color story. I almost bought it, but I missed it while it was on sale. And so then the pre-order was for October and I didn't want to use my budget right now for something that I wouldn't get until October. I have been feeling very needy and wanty when it comes to makeup. This is why Critical Sass is really good. It's a helpful reset. I have just been wanting to buy makeup and I'm budgeting this year. So I do have a budget. It's not like I'm always constantly buying something, but I like needed some newness to me, even if it wasn't new to the market, I needed it and I needed it now. So October was too far away from me. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing. I don't mind a pre-order usually. It was just like, right now? Everything has to be right now, unfortunately, in my heart. But I think this is really, really, really pretty. And I think it's a very, very reasonable price. I've not tried this cosmetic brand. So it'd be a really fun way to try a new formula to me. But ultimately, I think this is a really good buy if you were to be interested in it. I would check some reviews on their eyeshadows before you buy it because I don't know. But I do have some friends with affiliate codes. So affiliate codes are out there if you're looking to save a dollar too. And they do work because I had it in my cart and I applied one. So just so you know, I don't have one but people do. Along a similar vein, and I would say the less enticing to me palette is from MBA Cosmetics, their Pumpkin Kisses and Autumn Wishes palette. Again, beautiful oranges and greens. This is like, if you didn't want to go all the way with the previous palette, this would be the one that's worthwhile for you, I think, because it doesn't go as far with the shimmers and it doesn't have the purple, which I think the purple, if you weren't comfortable working with the color story with the purple, it's this one, I think it's like a little bit of an easier color story to work all together. There is also a green in it, which you'd have to figure out how to work in because the green is the outlier, but I love that. I think it's like a, like a pop of green. Just put it on the lower lash line. If you ever buy a palette and you don't know what to do with one of the shades, I always, that's a, that's a lower lash line color. Add some intrigue, don't do much, or put it on your inner corner. That's like a place, to, even if it's not a shimmer, just put it on the inner corner. As long as it's light. Well, I don't know. I, you know what? Try it. <laughs> Try it. Have fun. But I think this is really pretty too. I don't have a price for this one. Uh, this is from Makeup Release Radar. Then we'll always put the prices. So 
there's that. Sometimes makeup release writer will show you something and then like not have enough information. They did that with this. So YSL is releasing their Touche Clock Glow Compact in like Sailor Moon packaging. I don't know all of the lore of Sailor Moon, but the aesthetic of Sailor Moon, and I did watch it when I was younger. So I, it's, at some point, I'm, I'm sure I held a vast knowledge of Sailor Moon. At this juncture, I really don't, but I have a fondness for it nonetheless. So I see this and I think, oh, because Sailor Moon had a compact. That was what, at one point that was how she transformed. And I don't know why. I don't really talk about ColourPop on, on my channel. ColourPop collabs with someone and I don't give a flying fart about it, even if I do care. Like they did a Sailor Moon collection and I was like, no. But YSL can give me a compact that makes it feel worthwhile to have both things. My guess is this is for the Asian market exclusively because cushion anything is typically, typically Asia only or Japan only, or like, you know, they're, they're just, it's ne it doesn't come to us. So we did like go out of our way to find it. I acknowledge that I'm saying that from a very privileged place and that a lot, if not most things come to America. This scenario is like what many other countries experience whenever brands release makeup that don't deliver to them. I understand that. <laughs> I don't want you to get it twisted. I'm not not thinking about it. I don't even know if I would like the product inside. YSL makes okay complexion products. I like their concealer, but the All Hours Foundation, which they seem to be discontinuing because it went on sale for the first time ever. I think I've ever seen it on sale. It was like half off. So they must be bringing something new in. This, if it's real, if it's all right, it's going to hurt for me not to own. I wouldn't buy it. God damn what I want it. I do want it. I want it now. I want it now. And it doesn't end here with the Sailor Moon. I don't know if it's the next one, but this is not. Be, this will not be our last foray into Sailor Moon with beautiful packaging. I think I talked about this or I shared it in my story. Tom Ford's white suede eye and cheek palette for it's a 150th anniversary exclusive to Bloomingdale's. Not for the Tom Ford brand, but for Bloomingdale's. $150. I know that's how much these cost anyway. This is the most boring piece of shit <laughs> that I have ever seen. But inside of me, one set. <laughs> I look at that and I want it. And I cannot shake it. I know with all the logic and all the things that I can uh, persuade myself to not purchase this in my brain, none of them are going to be right. And with my budget, I only get $100 a month. I would have to roll over to another month in order to purchase this. So if that's 75% of two months budget, that product. And yet my heart still goes pretty power. I'm gonna walk through all of the things because I, I need to do it for me and I'm gonna do it for you. First and foremost, I hate face products in an eyeshadow and vice versa. I want it to be one thing or the other. I cannot feasibly sit here in front of you and lie to you and say that it'd be great for travel because even if I traveled, I'm not only gonna bring that. And if that were true, that would probably be the only time I would use it if I brought it on trips with me. Secondly, because I, I can't pack my makeup. Like that's recently someone asked me in one of my comment section, what would your travel makeup be? And it's like, I, I don't know. I try to take the whole vanity with me. I did do a packing video for the last trip I went on, which was in 2021 in October. So almost a year ago, I imagine it would look just like that still. <laughs> So I can't argue that. Secondly, there's only one, which means it's only for some skin tones, not inclusive. So that bothers me. It always bothers me. I, I have to point it out. My heart wants what it wants and it wants it. But I could not tell you why. It is boring. It is so, but it looks so easy. So easy. I don't even want any of you to buy it. I don't even want to hear about it. If you buy it, and it's good. I don't want to know. Michelle Wong, please don't buy this. Because <laughs> if she does, I will click on that video. And then you know what? I can hear Michelle talking about it now in my brain and her saying, it's so great. I would never use this. Because do you know what I have on my face today? I have a Cleona single and I used my Viseart Grand Pro 1 mattes. I'm dipping in one palette in another palette. The idea of easy eye makeup is something that I, <laughs> for lack of a better term, fetishize. It's like, I want that, but I don't do that. I can do that. I have done it. We've talked about it, but that's not how I mostly do my makeup. I showed you my everyday and like, that's what I would do if I was going out for like an easy breezy day. But this is what I want to do. You know, this, the drama, the mom, drama mom. That's what I want to do. And Tom Ford 
isn't giving me that. Tom Ford's not giving me the drama. Last year, he did try to give me the drama. And there is that sparkly chalet palette that got sneak peeked on makeup release radar in a very blurry photo that I talked about in Criticals as Live. Maybe that. Maybe that. But I, I can hear you now. I can hear all the smart people in my comments being like, just wait till it comes to cosmetic company store. And I know you're right. And I bet if I went to cosmetics company store right now, today, got in a car, went, last year's holiday stuff would probably still be there. <laughs> and I could get one of those lipsticks that I wanted. And I could get one of the quads that I wanted. But I've now almost made it a full year without them. Why do I need them now? And while I enjoy the Tom Ford quad I have and have enjoyed other Tom Ford quads in the past, I know in my heart of hearts that they are just like not the thing that always serves for me. They certainly have a time and a place and I use them in those times and places, but it's not me. And I need to be honest with myself. I think we have to move along from that. And I think I convinced myself that I'm not going to buy it. Kimberly Clark would be proud. Ugh, here's part two. Here's Sailor Moon part two. Shuamura, Shura, Shuamura, here's what makeup, it says, is releasing their Christmas collection. That's Sailor Moo, girl. We all know. The Pretty Guardian is sure doing the thing. Why did I just do a loser sign? Doing the, what is, what does her hand do? This palette is boring as shit. <laughs> boring is all sin. I'm not, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want it, but I don't want it. You know, it's like, I want it. And I th hope you know what I'm saying. It's like, I want it, but I don't want it. Well, Shuamura, you can get some places, but I don't know that the makeup is makes it to, I think they sell some of the cleansers at on Sephora.com. I don't know if they sell them in any of the stores. And then the shipping would be exorbitant if I like ship different from These are things that I know. I know, I know that these are hurdles that I have to jump. And yet Sailor Moon is still looking at me. The thing is, Usagi is not even my favorite one, but it's all about aesthetics, babes. I was much more into Sailor Jupiter, Lita. I actually don't know what her Jap I don't know what her real name is, like Jap the Japanese version, because I, of course, watched the dubs. I wasn't reading subtitles, not as a child. And I've even watched Sailor Moon as an adult, still with the dubs. I have no idea who any of these people are, and I've never seen them before in my whole life. I'm moving on, but... The, the, these Sailor Moon collections are just speaking to that inner child in me. The one thing with my budget this year that I have been loose, loosey goosey on is whether or not I include tools in my budget. And I have made an official stance on that now. I know that we are nine months into the year, but tools do not count because I don't buy them that often. Very rare. Obviously, we're going to be talking about a tool because I already told you that I bought it. And if you're doing the math at home, it seems like my budget was very exorbitant this month. And it was. And there is. It wasn't a loophole, but built into my contract, there was a reason I ended up with more than I probably should have this month. But we'll talk about that when we get to my budgeting video in October. We are already like halfway through September, by the way. <laughs> Excuse me. I am hurtling to 32. Her, I'm, it's like not letting, it's got a chokehold on time. It's dragging me to 32 as fast as possible after giving me a wildly amazing and catastrophic 31. It's not New Year's. We don't need to talk about it yet, but just know I got my eye on you time and you're doing some f nonsense right now. Sonia G. <laughs> launched her jumbo bronzer brush. Let me say this. I had been, this is a, just actually didn't come out of nowhere. Refer had been doing their buy one, get one half off sale. And I do eventually want to buy as many Sonia G brushes as I can to use and try. Then buy the whole range of BK brushes to use and try and be like this compared to Sonia G, which one's better? Which one do I think you should go for, etc trying to do the work for you so you don't have to do it. And then also buying refers range and, you know, kind of doing this over a period of time. That's big brain plan. So I had been looking at refer. There had been, well, Labor Day wasn't that long ago, but even before Labor Day, I was looking at them. There's this feeling in my stomach that it was like, why didn't you ever buy the Tom Ford bronzer brush? Which is a thought I never had before. But a valid thought for my brain to have, considering I just talked about that boring face and eye palette. And I was like, oh, well, I know that refer makes a dupe for that. Now, I have no idea how much Mr. Tom Ford's brush cost. The refer one, the refer one, $111 or something like that. Something close to that. I don't need to be precise. I'm not even going to put it on the screen. Some, you have to trust me. 
I'll edit it in. I don't want people in the comment section being like, it's this, this, th giving me timestamps. I don't care. Okay. And I thought, ooh, I don't want to try that for a hundred some dollars. Because I think, <laughs> because, uh, and this is the problem with running regular sales, too regular, because I do feel that refer is always kind of doing something. I get, you get emails regularly, not as much as like one Pat McGrath, but regularly. Refer will be like, there's something in the concept store, which I vaguely understand. So in my brain, the refer brush was going to cost about 50 dole hairs. I was wrong. It was more than double what I was expecting to pay for it. And I was like, maybe I don't want to do that. I get an email from Beautylish a few weeks after deciding this in my brain. Sonia G's releasing a bronzer brush. And I was like, oh, great. It's going to be twice the price of the refer one. It's not. It's less expensive than the refer one and probably a better shape for my face. Having tried Sonia G brushes, I know how beautiful her brushes can be. And I bought a second jumbo base. This is all because I had a bad weekend. So tools, we just, they're just not part of my budget. But I'm not going to go and buy all of the BK brushes tomorrow. Okay? I don't want you to get the idea that I am now, I have given myself that loophole in order to just spend money because that's not the case. The bronzer brush was a journey on its own that I was quietly having for a couple of months. Okay. Are we all good? Have, are you still yelling at? Stop typing. Just hit enter. I will understand your rant. You don't even need to finish it if you're yelling at me right now. Moving along. <laughs> Speaking of a brand that I'm now incredibly interested in because my friend I met through YouTube, Brittany, she has bought some stuff from Byredo. And now I'm curious now, her plus Kaki from Kaki Reviews Beauty talking about the quince and actually showing me what the real colors of the one quad looked like. Because I, the only quint I was ever interested in from Byredo was the black one. Was it because it came in a black case instead of the gold one? Yeah. But also I love a black smoky eye. However, I know that I don't need that because I have the Isamea palette and that can do even more than the Byredo Quint. No matter how beautiful the formula is, there's no need for me to explore similar color stories all the time, unless it's a green one and that's not part of these rules. But like if I bought a purple eyeshadow palette, this doesn't warrant me buying a million purple eyeshadow palettes. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm actually not interested in this product that we're going to talk about. It is the Byredo Liquid Lipstick Final. Everything about that sounds like something I wouldn't enjoy. However... Well, there's a clear one. So I don't know if these are glosses or is there even glitter in that clear one? Okay. Anyway, I'm sure this is someone's zhuzh. It's certainly not mine. The packaging though, you know, you very rarely see lip product packaging and you go, wow, that's something. And I certainly am looking at this and going, that's something. There's something doing. It's doing something to me. Not a product I'm particularly interested in. Excited to see Byredo extend their range a bit more and the colors in this product are much better than the colors in their lipstick but after seeing khaki talk about that one palette i think that byredo's marketing shots for their website i've never looked at byredo through another website to see what their marketing shots look like but i think that they did a really bad job showcasing them because i was much more interested in the byredo eyeshadow palettes after seeing khaki's footage of it and obviously hearing her talk about them but also like her swatching them and I was like yeah these look really great and I would have been so much more interested in them you know a year ago had Byredo successfully put together some marketing that made it actually look interesting but it doesn't but it is and that's the part that's they they failed us in their marketing so it's kind of the opposite thing where we're trying to see through the marketing and the bullshit and all of that other stuff in this video this is like the opposite is like byredo didn't do a very good job and i am now interested in byredo because of other people's personal experience and seeing their photos of it i don't know what to take away from that information these are pretty i have no idea how much these cost but i'm gonna guess at least around 60 dollars would be my guess about how much these things are gonna cost and i hope that that packaging is glass and not plastic. That is my hope for all of us. And if you buy this, let us know, okay, in the comments. We won't know for a couple more days. These don't release until September 15th. Let's move along. Let's move along to another brand that I have my eye on and the interest in them. This is bad. This is really bad. I don't actually think I want any of these, but thinking about how much I've been like wanting makeup and to try new things recently is like bothersome to me. Suku. Suku is always a brand that I'm very curious to try. However, I'm always very interested in their limited edition stuff. Not that I'm not ever interested in their regular core line, which in some places in America, you can find it. And it's cult beauty, 
occult beauty jacks up the pricing of stuff that I can buy in America too, which is strange. Suku, basically I'd have to buy from Selfridges and pay an arm and leg for shipping. Or I, some people gave me some places in Japan that would ship to me, but again, shipping, arm and leg. Let's look at these. Look at the, the palettes are very cute. And strangely enough, much more interested in this blue situation. This blue looks beautiful. I think I'd really enjoy that. I know that we are kind of now moving away from having the pastel purple being the pop of color, but now I'm into that. So I'm just a little bit late to the game. I could have been living a full fever dream this summer with purple, purple pops of lavender. I want it now. Like, you know what I have in my collection already? Lavender. So it's not like I need to buy any of this to fulfill lavender. And I have some very nice lavenders and I have them because at one time I really liked purple eyeshadow. Eyeshadow palettes always look gorgeous. Definitely want to try one. Really want to try on the quads. And I do think I love the lavender with the blues and the silvers. And how many times on this channel have we talked about eyeshadow palettes? And I'm like, blue? <laughs> Not for me. And yet here I am. I'm like, the blue one, please. One thing I appreciate about Suku is that there, there feels like we're all put together. Now, something that I don't like as much in this release that is normally the thing that really grabs me and is there blushes? Blushes this time around, I'm a little bit confused by. They remind me of, was it Illamasca or Il Maquillage had the bronzers with the blue stripe in the middle? Do you guys remember that? I remember that. I remember talking about it with my friend Tiffany when we did a new makeup nonsense bingo and they were on that. And I like, remember that? That's what these remind me of. And normally the blushes, normally they get me the blushes, but this these blushes, I don't understand what we're doing. Like, no, I really prefer their ombre packaging, but have fun, Suku. You will always be just out of the grasp of my hand, okay? And it's better that way for me and for you. Ah, this is out. People are talking about this. I think it launched to, at the day I record this. I think this launched today. The Night of Creation collection from Kaleidos. So there's the two quads and then there's the multi-chrome eyeliners, which is where everyone's getting their whole life to. Um, not that I don't love a multi-chrome. This is probably the first bit of advice that I've actually had for you. <laughs> Everything else has been like, I'm not going to buy this, but I really want it. And I don't really know how, like, I don't really know how to talk myself off the ledge, but I just know logistically that I'm, I'm not going to do that except for the Sonia G brush, but I won't hear it. I won't hear it. I hear it. I hear the clacking. Some beautiful person with long acrylic nails going, I can't believe. Let's talk about these multi-chrome eyeliners. I'm not saying that I own every multi-chrome, but I own quite a bit. Well, I don't even know how much of a ratio I own of the Cleona multi-chromes considering they just launched more. But I own quite a few. And you know what? I, and here's what I'll say to you. And this isn't the pro this is not the case for everyone. But the case for me and the way that I use makeup is that I don't always use them because I'm pretty bad about using single eyeshadows. I'm trying to change that. I'm I'm not only creating content to change that. Today is one of those days. I'm featuring a Cleona shade that I don't wear that often on my eyes today. Making content about it. But I am being better about building my own palettes, including these eyeshadows in it. And I think the Cleona multichromes are very good. And I have them. I don't need to buy and you don't need to buy if you are, and this is assuming you already have multichromes. So if you don't have multichromes, this conversation is not for you. This method will not work for you. <laughs> but if you already have a lot of multichromes in your collection, what is going to be so different about this? And it's an eyeliner and I understand that's a bit different, but is it? Do you, I mean, like, what is that going to offer you that you can't, other than it being a different format of a multichrome? Do you have liquid multichromes? You can do graphic stuff with liquid multichromes. I don't own liquid multichromes. I don't own a multichrome liner. And I know that other brands have multichrome liners. And how many multichromes do you, how, and I know that that's like, I could have just started a war by asking that. But like, how many multichromes do you need? And instead of it shifting from something to peach, you're like something to soft pink. It's going to look the same. I'm, I'm not trying to, start fights here but i'm just saying in my opinion the reason that i look at multichromes and i'm like rather unimpressed is because like it's not like multichromes are a new thing in fact multichromes have been like hot for a while you probably already have the ones that you want the most and that's how you should do it you should buy the ones you want the most anyway i'm actually not that intrigued by the eyeliner it's not because i don't like multichromes they do look beautiful though. And seeing people swatch them, I am like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But again, how often am I already wearing the multichromes that I have? I don't use eyeliner that much, especially never do graphic eyeliner, which is I would I could see a situation where I would talk myself into it and be like, I would do only graphic eyeliner if I bought these. That's not true. In reality, if I were to buy these, I would just put them all over the lid and blend them out with my finger and be like, it's done. And you know what I can do that with? 
the eyeshadows that I already own. So I don't need this. You know what got me a little bit more? Those eyeshadow quads. I think they're pretty. Now, people are not giving these the resounding woohoo that they gave the last set of eyeshadow quads, at least from what I hear. I think these color stores are really beautiful. Not that I don't always love a cool tone. I don't know why I'm like, cool tones for fall, how revolutionary. But like, you know how most people go like that warm, like the first couple palettes we looked at, it's like, that's what people, that's like normally people's take on fall. And I'm like, I want to wear cool tones for fall. And so this, these serve that. And I like the Kaleidos formula. It's, granted, I've only tried one palette. Did I buy a cool tone eyeshadow small palette? Yes, I did. I didn't buy it from Kaleidos. And we'll talk about that at another time. That's not a conversation for now. So I think I can easily say that too. And not speaking from direct experience having used them, but people in general seem to be not saying that they're bad, but just seem to be less excited about these eyeshadow quads. But they are being released with something new to the market for Kaleidos, like a new thing, right? So like they have these new formulas of these multi-chromes. You can easily talk your out of this, out of yourself out of this collection. I'm trying to help you. I'm giving you the tools and the arguments for you to do that. Now I, what I need you to do is with that Sailor Moon and that stupid Tom Ford thing. That's what I need you in the comp. We're a community here. We are the beauty community. <laughs> Forget everyone else. You're watching, you, just me and you and who, who's watching this. We are the beauty and I need your help. This is a call to action. Actually, I'm not that excited about this Kaleidos collection. Actually, the, the eyeliners, I know that's why everyone's like really hyped up on and was very excited about, but it's actually not that interesting to me. The the cool toned eyeshadow quad with the purple sparkly. Yeah, that that's the thing that sings to me the most. <laughs> this Dior Quint. What? Now, did I make fun of Mr. Tom Ford earlier for being boring? Yes. Did I say that Sailor Moon palette was boring as sin? Yes. I haven't seen more of a flop of release in quite some time than this Dior Quint. If you want this, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> if you, as someone who very likely really loves makeup, want this, tell me why. Tell me why in the comments. I'll respond. I'll tell you why you don't need it. You know what? I'll respond to you four very similar toned browns and then like one really, really dark brown in the middle. What? What? And let me let me do you a favor. Kaki did say in her video when she referenced it, said that they were none of them were mattes. So I don't know if that's a thing for you. I don't need my eyeshadow palette to have mattes in it for me to love it. It's not a thing that I need personally. But I'm here to throw that out for you just in case you need that and you think you want this. If you like browns that much, I am sure that your eyeshadow collection the one thing I am sure of when I'm talking to, to anybody is like, you got some browns in your collection. <laughs> Whether you wanted them or not, you got some browns in your collection. And if this sings to you, Jesus Christ, just love the browns that are already in your collection. I'm just saying, I don't understand this. I do, but also, no. Oh, speaking of boring as sin, Shantikai did really good this summer with that cheek thing. In fact, at one point, I was like, I should just buy that. Recently, again, really <laughs> struggling with wanting to, I just, I'm like, money, I'll spend it. Money, I will. And I was like, I will break my budget just to buy that cheek thing that they did this summer that everyone really liked. I thought about it. And then this, this is trash. What is this? Radiant blush, a radiance powder, does only come in one shade and glow blur glow powder blur glow powder no 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 you got me once with limited edition powder shantikai and then you added it to your range and if this goes over well it'll probably happen and i will burn it then i don't need your radiance glow powder i just bought the auric glow lust and while that is not at all the same kind of product what do you think it's gonna do make me glow <laughs> it's doing it in this very video that you're watching. But this is the most, I recently in a video talked about how I thought that Gucci's blushes were like very interesting and desaturated, even though I don't think that's a product that you need. That's like, there was also that resolve too. So in case you were still interested in the Gucci blush, you didn't watch the video where I talked about the Gucci blush. I'm here to tell you, I have tried it. I have it. I don't think it's worth $49. Is it pretty? Yes. But it's like the formula of the actual product that you're buying not the packaging around it, is just fine. And like I said, you deserve more than just 
fine for $49. This is desaturated in the wrong way, where it's like, what are you giving us? Less than Tom Ford, actually. Did you all have a conference and say, do you know Shonda Rhimes did a year of yes? All of the makeup brands said year of less in the fall. This is also boring as sin. Now, I did not read this description before coming on the camera. <laughs> and I am a little bit like the blur glow powder. That that hit me a little harder than I was expecting. That that one. But again, I'm not gonna do it. I have a literal backup <laughs> of a powder that I have yet to hit pan on because you said it was gonna be limited edition and it wasn't. And and you know what will happen if this is limited edition and I don't buy it three years from now. I will not even remember that I didn't get to try the Blair Glow Powder. So if you buy this Blair Glow Powder <laughs> and it is the best thing that you've ever tried in your whole ass life, I don't want to hear about it, okay? One size collaborated with Disney. I really only want to talk about one thing. It is just the thing in the compact. What is the thing in the compact? The Bit of Magic Highlighter. Huda and One Size must have found someone who manufactures blush like this or powder products like this to be able to do this effect at the same time. Except, unfortunately, for One Size, Huda beat them to the punch. <laughs> so, if you look at the compact, I'm going to point this out to you because I didn't really understand what was happening. So, when you open the compact, when you look at the pan embossing, it's one thing. But if you look at the reflection of the pan embossing in the mirror, that's a different thing. That's all. That's all I wanted to talk about. Anyway, I was really impressed when I saw who to do it. Less impressed seeing it this time. But like, cool, I guess. But also, this is one of those things. And not that Disney collections in general are not, they're like viewed to be not used, right? That's kind of the makeup you collect. This, this pan embossing, we are going too far. I'm going to take a stance on pan embossing right now. Stop making it pretty. Because what you're doing is you're encouraging people to be like, I don't want to touch this or use this because the embossing is so pretty. Makeup is meant to be used. Reminder <laughs> to anyone, makeup is meant to be used. So if you want to buy this highlighter just to look at, you can do that online for free. It's called Google, babe. Google Images. You can be like one size highlighter thing. You can even print it out if you wanted to. But if you're going to buy it to look at it. Now, if the color speaks to you and you want to try the formula, sure. But then I want you to use it. And you know what's going to happen when you use it? All the magic of that pan embossing is going to go away. It's gonna because you're going to use it. You should use it. Less pan embossing, more beautiful packaging. That's what, for me, that's what I'm asking for. Opposite end of the spectrum. Urban Decay released their new Naked palette, which is... A collaboration with Robin Eisenberg, who is an illustrator, which is why we get these beautiful images on here. Available in South America now. And then I, <laughs> I'm like, is this not going to come to America? The literal joke Urban Decay would make of us Americans if they released the first interesting thing they have released <laughs> in like seven years <laughs> and they don't bring it to America. It's like, it's like, what are, what are you trying to, why? <laughs> why would you do that to Urban Decay? Why would you do that to us? Now, I'm not saying that that is what's happening here, because it does say that it will be coming to other countries soon. But I almost kind of hope it doesn't come to America. Because that'd be very funny. This is the first thing in a long time that I've seen the makeup community be like, oh my god, I kind of want that from Urban Decay, other than their foundation and complexion. Cause like, I think that did go over fairly well, but that was at a time where I wasn't really watching YouTube, but I do see people still using those. So they must have gone over well, I guess. <laughs> I liked them as well. I just don't use, I, don't, I have decluttered them. This is pretty. Now I do want to reconsider what we are calling naked at this point, because wouldn't it have been better to just have the illustration without naked slapped over the top of it so we can really see the beautiful illustration. Now, I don't know if Robin Eisenberg's artwork always has people with different skin tones, like one person has purple skin tone and one person, and, and then if that's what we're doing, then I understand it a little bit more. These colors are really pretty. I hope the formula is nice. We've been rooting for you. We're all rooting for you. How dare you, Urban Decay? And now you have dared to do well. I just hope it's good. <laughs> I just hope the quality is good. Am I gonna buy it? No, but it is very pretty. And it had me thinking about it. So there's that. 
But who do we credit? It's like they did a collaboration with this Robin Eisenberg person, and I don't know what what their pronouns are, who they are, what. But like, was it them? Did they make it interesting? I'm just saying. I also don't know if this person is still with us. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors that I don't know. So what I probably will do later tonight while I'm editing, whatever, I will figure out who that person is and learn a little bit more about them because now I'm interested. Maybe I'll buy some artwork from them. Art prints. I can't afford artwork. But a print, maybe. Anyway, great job, Urban Decay. Be Perfect Cosmetics and Stacey Marie MUA. How many of these are we going to do? I do want to acknowledge that I did not clock that there was a regular sized carnival palette. I did not see them. I thought it was two of the same thing. And that's not what's happening in this photo. I thought both palettes were the same. So there is a larger one and there is a smaller one. I'm going to go on to talk about only the XL one because that's all I thought was in the photo. This is what happens when we do hot takes sometimes. And I'm... (laughs) <laughs> it's giving a little bit naked palette, you know, obviously on the opposite end of the spectrum, they're doing like brights and they've done colorful things. That's kind of been the gig. Why should I buy this one versus like the, any of the last ones? Just my question. These always go, well, I don't think the last one went over as well as the ones prior to the last one, but these tend to go over pretty well in the community, but it's too big. And honestly, I don't need anything XL except for my clothing, but that's different. (laughs) But I don't want anything that I'm using to be described as XL. I don't want to have to store XL. Where am I going to put that? It wouldn't even go with the rest of my makeup collection and be somewhere else. I would never grab. I don't think that one could justify buying this if you have bought one or all of the previous collaborations. And this is nothing against Stacey Marie. It's just like, if you did smaller palettes over a longer period of time with more curated color stories, we wouldn't have run into this problem. But we've decided to go with every color every time. And when it comes, when our palettes are this big, it's really great for someone who doesn't own any makeup, right? To get all these colors in one spot. But if you're watching me, I'm going to go ahead and guess. You might have a lot of makeup. I'm going to guess. If you're a newbie and you found me, hi, welcome. (laughs) Hi. Potentially you. This might not be a bad buy for you. Everyone else? It's, it's not it's not for us. This isn't for us. And if you were planning on buying it and you've bought any of the other ones, why would you buy this one? What about this one is different enough for you? Ask yourself these questions <laughs> because this one looks like the first two to me. And, and you might be able to talk me. You might be able to say, oh, well, the first one was this, this, and that. It's like, I think we've, I think we've run our course. I don't know how many palette agreement you signed to do this, but I think... I, I'm, I'm running out of steam about caring about this because I think the first time I saw one, I was like, yeah, cool. The second time I saw one, I was like, oh, again? The third time I was like, what? And now I'm like, no more, please. I will keep this brief, but generally, the Tarte Holiday Collection doesn't suck. There's a, a face palette. There's a couple of face palettes. There's one that has six pans in it. There's one that has four pans in it. You know, the same argument I make for any time someone releases face palettes is like, it should be four different skin tones like you know you need to do it you need to release a a, a, a four cover all uh, most you know try to cover as many skin tones as you can because one face palette isn't enough the eyeshadow palette that comes in the duos those don't look that bad they look okay this is perfectly acceptable gifting makeup i think and i think even well minus the one that comes with the mascara in the palette we should stop doing that i don't know why we have i don't know why the makeup brands haven't heard that feedback i understand there are people who don't wear makeup like me and that's like a very appealing thing to them and it's like grandma went to sephora and saw that and they were grandma was like what a steal less of that start thinking about me when you were doing your holiday collections don't think about grandma Think about me. The fact that Tarte didn't swing too hard and like go really in a terrible direction is a sign of good things. And honestly, Tarte recently has been releasing some stuff that I have not wanted to spit on. This is the last thing. I have been talking for a while. I was like, how many things have been released since I did Critical Sass, which wasn't even that long ago. Trixie Cosmetics, who I have, you know, we have the relationship that we have. They're releasing the Girl Talk collection. I might want to, I might want one of the hooded robes, but that's merch. It doesn't count. The eyeshadow palette is cute. And I think a lot of my subscribers who are very into color will love this. It's certainly not a palette 
for for me. I think what happens when I look at Trixie Cosmetics imagery for their eyeshadows, if you know nothing about me, it's the texture of it all that really gets me going. And the shimmers look just as flat as the mattes, which like mattes are allowed to look flat because they're not, what are they doing? They're not trying to do anything fun. They're allowed to be colorful. They're allowed to do some fun things. But like mattes, you're doing them, they're flat. But then the shimmers look just as flat as the mattes. And there's something about that. I'm just like, so it's all going to look the same, right? The the saturation's not different. It's like, it always looks like it's like the one color and then the shimmer version of that one color, which could make things easier for different levels of skill in makeup. And I can appreciate that. But like, what is special about your eyeshadows? Everything about this is great. The theming, girl talk. I love that. I know where we are. I hear you. I feel you. I've lived that. I love that as a concept for a makeup launch. However, I look at the eyeshadow palette and I'm like, the colors, spot on. The intrigue, not there. <laughs> and I, I want, I truly, madly, deeply, when I talk about Trixie Cosmetics, I want so badly one day to see that Trixie has launched something and go, that is incredible. And I want a piece of that pie. But Trixie has yet to do that. We are so close sometimes. This is so close. And the the plant gay was like very close. The plant gay unfortunately came out after the Kaleidos flower punk and flower punk like did what Trixie was doing like more interestingly in my opinion. So like this just like misses me. But it's cool. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like cool but like not cool enough. Like this is not in general Trixie Cosmetics and I've said this before is like the the elegance of it is not there. It's like more cutesy. But there's, I think there's a way that these things can meet in a way that still holds true to like the Trixie price point. If you know what I mean? Like, what if we made a quad that was like a little bit more expensive where we got to like play with like a more interesting formula? Just a more interesting. Because like other indie brands make really interesting formulas. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just like, that's what I want. Trixie and I think about makeup differently, very differently. And that's okay. And obviously, this is Trixie's doing very well, much better than me, much better than I ever will. So maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Perhaps I'm wrong. <laughs> but I think this actually this collection is going to go over very well, very, very well. So like, I see it, like I see it, but it's like, it comes this close to my head. And then it like, swerves away. <laughs> in general, I am rooting for brands to make things that are interesting, that have high quality formulas, because th what they, they want us to buy it. But it's like the problem is always one of those things is lacking. And I think that we when we go through these new makeup releases in the critical size format, these are the things that we learn. Anyway, that wraps it up for me. This was a long one. It's been a while since they've been this long. Well, it's been a while since an edited one has been this long. <laughs> Critical Sass Live typically is an hour long. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are new here and you aren't subscribed, I would love to have you, my loves, subscribe. So go ahead and do that now. And then also while you're down there, there's a little thumb. You're going to like it up. You're going to say, yes, I like this person. And I'm also on Patreon.com if you'd like to support me there. Thank you to my lovely patrons. And in about two weeks time, we'll find out if I won any of those things that any of you might have voted for me. And again, thank you for voting for me if you did, which I'm excited to figure out if I am. Something's coming your way that I've never done before. I'm like, I don't think I've ever done one on my channel. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I've hit my limit. Remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me. <laughs> They only get more incredulous. Every time I say it, I feel, I watched my last video and I was like, I didn't even laugh at myself. And then I was laughing at myself. Like I said it seriously, you know, anyway, I appreciate you all. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.